Right, we come to our last uh, formal presenter, who's, uh, who's starting to become a bit of a star at Better Culture, if truth be known. It's Lydia Slack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who presented at the Secret Better Culture and at the Stylus as well, I believe. So I'm guessing it's going to be about farming in some way, but I don't want to preempt anything. And as far as I know, no trigger alerts. But pay attention, because we're probably going to hear something really wonderful. Lydia Slack. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I have always been the type of person to say yes. So when somebody said, Lydia, do you want to play netball with us? I said yes. But this was no ordinary netball team. This was the Manzini Thunderbirds. At the time, I was in Swaziland, sent by Project Trust to volunteer at Manzini Youth Care. Alongside teaching maths and English, I also coached netball to some of the local children. And although I did consider myself quite good at netball, I never mentioned it, as I didn't want the weight of expectation on my shoulders. I was really looking forward to my first game when this appeared in the Swazi Times. <laughs> Swaziland's national newspaper. Thunderbirds sign European player. This article appeared in shop windows and the children at school were waving copies about in class. Unbeknown to me, not only was I quite good at netball at high school, I was now quite good in the Northern Hemisphere. I turned up to the ground on my first day looking for the changing rooms, only to find my teammates stripping off in the open air in front of about a hundred spectators. And when I say stripping off, I really mean stripping off. I looked for somewhere discreet to change <laughs> and tried to hide myself behind the only thing available, a netball post. Unfortunately, the post was too thin and half the spectators had a copy of the Swazi Times with my picture in. I then heard a voice behind me say, Lydia, why you not show your breasts? I turned around and there was standing six foot seven, 14 stone of pure Swazi muscle, carrying two netballs under each arm. She was our team captain. I said, well, in Derbyshire, where I usually play netball, it's always very cold. <laughs> Ten minutes into the game, I broke my finger and was declared injured. But I was quite relieved, really, as I was getting a lot of attention from the locals. And I thought, six weeks, not being able to play, everything would calm down. This was the Swazi Times. <laughs> Sports Personality of the Week. I got injured on my debut British Netball star. The whole episode was a bit weird, really, but it taught me a great lesson that if you put your hand up and volunteer for something, you never know where it could lead. I was also the only one who said yes when it came to looking after the children at playground duty. This involved preventing them from beating each other, me, or the dinner lady. I can remember showing some of the more withdrawn children this trick, and they were just so shocked and afraid to do it themselves. And it took me a while to convince them that their thumb didn't actually come off. But all of a sudden, it spread around the playgrounds like wildfire, and all the children were laughing and showing each other, and I felt like I'd really connected. They weren't laughing at assembly the next morning. When the headmaster, Mr. Shibangu, was shouting at the children in Saswati. I don't know what they'd done, but I could tell he was looking for the ringleader. But the children, to their credit, were giving nothing away. He then did this, shouted some more, and all the children pointed at me. <laughs> he says, this was probably the worst insult you could do in Swaziland, and I wasn't to give the children permission to do it again. <laughs> the only time I really said no, is when somebody said, Nifuna Gutsi Sishade, which means, hello, will you marry me? 
a question I was asked 187 times throughout the year. In fact, me and my partner were having a competition to see what the highest offer we could get for our hand in marriage. Because in Swaziland, when you are proposed to, an offer is made to your family of what the Swazis call Lebola. The highest offer I got was 43 cows. Now, my dad's a dairy farmer. And he said if he'd have known, he would have taken that. And I'd still be in Swaziland now. Thank you. Lydia Slack. There was farming in there at the end. I was nearly right. 